Ron here. I've just completed a small study on jewel thieves and I'd like to share the information with you. First off, let's see, I checked out three different types of cores. I have a green blue toroid core, all iron powder toroids. This is an inch and a quarter across the outside diameter. I have a black core which is one inch diameter and a gray core which is also one inch diameter on the outside and the uh, you can google these numbers to look at the specification on, on uh, the black one here 77894-A7 and the gray one is a 55894-A2 Now, with this experiment, I use the uh, same circuit board, of course, for uh, each experiment, each toroid, each winding. And I also uh, used an analog amp meter to uh, check the uh, amount of amperage coming out of my uh, battery into the circuit so I can tell how many watts go in and how much performance comes out in the form of light and voltage across an LED. Also, the wire I've been using, I started using a plastic wire, or I should say a wire with plastic insulation. This is a 22 gauge wire, and it's what most home hobbyists have on hand. 22 gauge wire is usually used for uh, connections on uh, breadboards like this one. And I also used a uh, magnet wire, two different types, two, two different gauges of magnet wire, a 22 gauge and a 28 gauge. and uh, I checked the plastic uh, coated wire uh, against the magnet wire and also the different toroids and different windings or different turns, number of turns on each toroid. So let's take a look at the circuit board itself. On the breadboard I have what's a, a typical jewel thief circuit uh, although the resistance going into the base of my transistor is 1.5 kilo ohms and in parallel with the resistor, I have a 0.1, microfar <coughs> pardon me, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. This one happens to be a disc type or ceramic type. <coughs> Fitting the base of a transistor, that transistor happens to be an MJE181. It's a little more robust than the 2N222. The LED is a typical 5 uh, uh, millimeter uh, cheapy LED. It's not super bright or anything. It's just a typical LED. Uh, it is connected between the collector and emitter of the transistor, which is normal for the jewel thief. Uh, I also have a circuit in parallel with the LED bulb itself, so I can measure uh, voltage in DC, direct current. So I used a, uh, a diode in parallel uh, feeding a uh, capacitor. The capacitor is a 1000 picofarad AC capacitor and uh, so the diode is feeding the capacitor which is a side chain for the LED. It's in parallel with the two prongs of the LED so I can I can read the uh, voltage being applied to the LED. Uh, let me just fire this up for a second give you an idea of how bright all the tests were. All the tests were good uh, there's no configuration that really stinks. Uh, each uh, toroid core in each amount of wire windings did a great job lighting up an LED. I'm using a, about 1.4 volts on my battery right now. And you can see the uh, reflection on my hand. You can see the LED is driven quite well. It's very bright. All the tests the bulb was equally as bright to my eye. I have no way of judging the lumens of such a small device, but each circuit, each toroid core, each number of turns of wire on the core drove that LED quite bright. It's a very good light. So let's go over to the computer and I'll share uh, my findings with you and uh, let's see if there's anything surprising with this uh, jewel thief. Here we are at the computer to review the uh, measurements I took in the Jewel Thief study. Uh, I forgot to mention previously that I had used 31 inches of bifolar wire 
for each of these tests. Okay, and the first thing we want to look at is, is plastic wire better or inferior to enamel coated wire? And I made a graph in which the power input down here is exaggerated so I could tell uh, whether plastic or enamel was letting more uh, current into the system and whether that related to more voltage out of the system. Now you can see there's a mixed bag on that screen and you really can't read it so let me just make the uh, make these uh, judgments for you. Now there's only six data points because the plastic wire can't go around the toroid too many times so uh, there's only six data points to choose from. Uh, three of these data points I judged uh, the plastic and enamel wires to be equal in their effectiveness. Uh, in two cases out of six data points plastic coated wire did better. In one case enamel coated wire did better. So there is no no difference between plastic coated wire and enamel coated magnet wire. They did equally as well in the comparison test. Uh, let's move on to frequency. What happens with frequency with the number of windings on a toroid on a jewel thief? Uh, down here we're starting with 20 turns of wire and all three types of toroids were compared against each other. The green blue the gray and the black. Uh, this is 22 gauge wire in this particular chart and you notice at 20 turns we're slightly below 300 kilohertz. Uh, as the turns decrease the frequency increases. Uh, at the low end of this chart is six turns uh, which gets a little unpredictable uh, but did give me results nonetheless. Uh, I would suggest going no lower than eight turns even on a one inch diameter toroid. Uh, so the general trend is lower frequencies at higher amounts of turns. And let's compare that with the 28 gauge wire. I'll just flip that back and forth a little bit. You can see these charts are nearly identical except for the uh, far right hand side where it was only six turns on the toroid where it gets a little un unpredictable but other than that uh, the frequency chart is almost identical and the different types of toroid cores did beat each other out. They took turns uh, switching from one toroid to another so they're basically equivalent. They did pretty much the same amount of job. Uh, they did not, one did not give a much higher frequency rating than another. Uh, they all did equally as well. So let's go on to the uh, amount of current that was let into the system or consumed by the system. Uh, this is a measure of watts into the system. Uh, with a greater number of turns, uh, less energy is let into the system, less energy is consumed by the system. And as turns were fewer, I took turns away from the toroid, the amount of energy that went in to the jewel thief increased. But that increase in energy is not in relation to the output that is achieved. So I'm just stating that there's a general trend of uh, you'll get longer battery life with more turns on your toroid. Now let's go to the what I call the uh, massive list. This is going to be a little difficult to get in this frame. Uh, this list is all the toroids uh, together, all the wire types together, one big massive list, and it's sorted in order of AA battery runtime hours. The AA battery runtime hours is an actual real time estimate, and before I go over these results, let me show you that formula right now. Uh, this is the formula I use to figure out how long uh, something will run on a battery based on amperage consumption. So I'm looking at the amp hour rating on a battery up here on my metal hydride rechargeable EverReady batteries. Uh, they're rated at 2.3 amp hours. That's how much energy they can hold. 
I only use 90% of the advertised rating because I feel that's a bit inflated. Uh, and the formula down here uh, shows how many amps are drawn from a battery uh, in the amount, uh, you know, a joule fee will typically draw up 50 to 60 milliamps. And here's 65 milliamps in this example. And if we divide uh, the amp hours by the amount of amps uh, consumed by the circuit, you'll get the total amount of hours uh, that the battery uh, has in it. And those amp hours are a fantasy. You'll never actually achieve that. Uh, what is real, pardon me, that's my cat. <laughs> what is real is discharging a battery by only 30% is a very comfortable discharge rate any battery can attain. And the, that's what I consider to be the real runtime. If you take a AA battery rated at 2.3 amp hours, put it through this formula, it'll actually run a circuit drawing 65 milliamps, will actually run for nine and a half hours. Okay? So that's an actual real time estimate. That's the real time you can expect to achieve. Now, back to the big guy here. Uh, this list is sorted in order of maximum runtime for a battery. And you'll notice there's a mixed bag on the top five. Uh, the black toroid is represented here, the gray toroid, the green blue toroid, uh, 28 gauge wire, 22 gauge wire. Uh, what they do have in common is they have more turns than most of the tests and they are on the lower end of the kilohertz scale. They consumed uh, the least amount of energy to attain this runtime of 20 hours, 15 hours, uh, but the voltage rating under load with the LED ranged from 3.2 volts across the LED uh, all the way to 3.52 uh, volts. So there's a, a wide range of voltage output associated with uh, this low energy input. So it's not a one-to-one -one correlation of turns and the amount of power consumed and the output in volts. Now let's redo this uh, chart in order of volts at the output under load. Uh, now the highest reading I got was an output of 3.81 volts while driving an LED bulb and uh, you'll notice the top five uh, have lower amount of turns but not the least amount of turns. Uh, the black toroid is up here as well as the green blue and the gray isn't very far behind. 28 gauge wire is represented as well as 22 gauge wire and the kilohertz is on the uh, a bit higher but not the highest and the amount of power consumed by this circuit is not the most amount consumed to get the most output of volts at the end. So, let's see, let's, uh, let's wrap this up with some conclusions. Uh, enamel wire is not better than plastic coated wire. They did equally as well. Uh, more turns on your toroid for a jewel thief uh, trends toward lower frequencies, fewer turns trends toward higher frequencies, but it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. It just trends that way. Uh, more turns generally consumes less power. Less turns generally consumes more power, but again, not a one-to-one -one relationship, merely a trend. And I have concluded that no toroid type dominated. Uh, the black was not better than the gray. The gray was not better than the green blue. Uh, no wire type dominated. Uh, the plastic did just as well as enamel. Uh, no wire gauge dominated. Uh, 22 gauge wire was not superior to 28 gauge wire. Uh, they both did very well. And to conclude, no particular frequency is superior to another. Uh, it was not the highest frequency that gave the best 
voltage output. It was not the lowest frequency that saved the most amount of energy. Uh, so those are the conclusions I can make and I will tell you that it doesn't depend on your toroid or the gauge of wire uh, but you will have to experiment uh, with different number of turns and depending on what you're after uh, it'll probably be a compromise between highest voltage output and the best runtime on your circuit if you're interested in like a flashlight type of affair. Uh, the number one top rated uh, guy I got was the black toroid using 22 gauge plastic wire. Only 10 turns uh, will give me 3.81 volts across an LED while driving the LED and a runtime of greater than eight hours, realistically eight hours. So that was the number one guy on my particular test. Uh, those are my conclusions. That's all I've got. Cheers.